Hey there, friends. This is Bill McDonald, and I, 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 I got a zero. I'm going to show you, using what I call the mariachi method, how to remember five ways that your students can possibly get zeros that begin with the word I. We've already talked about one of them, and I'll show it to you again, just for those of you who might be seeing me for the first time. There has to be one idea, I, about the topic, the prompt. And so if there's not one, then that's one of the first reasons that you get a zero. So let me show you. I don't want anybody to think that I was making fun of mariachis because there are two in my family that I love very much. This young lady to the left is my daughter, Cherise. She's now 19 years old. She was the president of the mariachis at her high school in PSJ Memorial, Bar San Juan Alamo in the Alamo Memorial High School. This is her little brother, Israel, who was the vice president of the mariachi group. And so I love mariachis. I just don't want any of the eyes to show up on the essay that will cause your students to get a huge zero. So let's see what those are, shall we? All right, we've already mentioned the first one, I. If you don't have an idea about the topic at all, if they can't find any ideas, any sentences that respond to the topic in complete sentences, then they are going to have to give your kids most likely two zeros because in order to get the zeros of non-scorables, two readers have to agree. So if, if one says it was a zero and another person says it's a one or a two or a three possibly, then both of those throw, scores get thrown out and they get regraded until they're either two zeros or two of some other uh, score. The other eye is indecipherable. Let me zoom in a little bit so that you can see what is it they, they mean by indecipherable. Indecipherable, the student makes an attempt to write but cannot generate coherent words and phrases in response to the prompt. Instead, the strings, letters, words and phrases together in meaningless fashion. So basically, it looks like just a big mess. They're, they're not at functioning at the word level or even the sentence level. So whenever they're telling you, don't teach skills in isolation, well, when we stopped teaching penmanship so many years ago, it started a downward trend in terms of the, score, the scores, because if your paper is indecipherable in terms of penmanship, then your kids are going to get zeros. The other I, 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 if it's illegible, if you're, Grammar is so bad, and handwriting is, is here too, but it goes on to talk about spelling. So let's just focus on all of grammar, what you might call cups with one S, capitalization, usage, punctuation, and spelling, which I call cups with two S's, cap capitalization, that's where I'm wearing a cap because every sentence should start with a capital, correct subject verb agreement, subject, person, place, thing, or idea, people, place, things, ideas, predicate, action, verb, and ending, that's a sentence. So if you don't have that, you, you can have a zero if none of your sentences make sense in terms of subjects and predicates. Punctuation, if we don't have things that slow the sentence down like commas and apostrophes, contractions, quotation marks, or punctuation that stops the sentences such as periods, exclamations, question marks, or in Spanish, if we don't have enes, the tildes, or acentos, that's pronunciación, because if you don't have those, it changes the pronunciation. So that's going to be an error. And it's not necessarily spelling, but it's 
P for pronunciación for those of you who teach Spanish. And there's a brief talking about another language, which we'll get into in another video. Insufficient content. I started, I have an idea sentence, a central idea, controlling idea, thesis, or position, but I don't go much beyond that. Maybe there might be a sentence with a reason. That's not really enough content, insufficient content to make an accurate judgment on the quality of the student's writing. Now, the last one here I wanna talk about today in this video is there's insufficient original writing. If you're telling your students to copy sentences from the read section or the think section, and there's very little of anything else, except for the prompt, which was already there in the first place, you're telling them to ask a question about the prompt, that's fine as long as you have something else like I showed you in my previous video. But if that's all there is, is a question about the prompt and using the prompt words in a sentence to say your idea and then that's it, you have like two or three words that are yours and the rest are someone else's. I know that some students will write portions of a book or a song or a play. And if there's too much that's not your content that's original, they're gonna give you zeros. So be careful on that. I, I remember one year I went to a, a school here in PSJ and the students were looking over the essays from the previous year from other kids. And what happened was this one of the students uh, raised her hand and said, sir, this student, all he did was rewrite one of the passages from the editing and revising section. Well, comma, I think now the state has realized that some kids will do that because that kid ended up getting a three on the essay because remember editing passages have errors in conventions and revising passages have errors in content, things that are missing in the organization and development and the uh, editing has things in terms of the grammar, the conventions, the cups with two S's. The S, so we don't forget, is the spelling. The other S is sentence boundaries. They don't know when a sentence starts or ends, so run-ons and fragments. So let me show you something that I recommend that you do with your students so they can remember the I, yay, yay, yay. What you're gonna have them do is take a regular sheet of paper and fold it equally into four sections, fold it in half and then fold it in half, okay? So you see, I made a, on the top, I made a T because there's going to be a topic. And we said in the video that you could have a title. It doesn't have to be there because they don't grade you up or down based on having a title or not, but you could have a topic title that kind of gets you going in the right direction. What our, our first method of getting a zero on one of his eyeballs here, we got two eyes. So does he, in my introduction, I will get a zero if the reader cannot find any idea or ideas about the topic, any ideas about the topic. I will get a zero if I have indecipherable penmanship. And so when, when they tell you don't teach any skills in isolation, well, if you have kids who are not functioning at the PE level, level where they can't write, read an entire passage with comprehension, they can't read an entire paragraph, Sometimes they can't even read an entire sentence. They won't be able to write an essay that has an entire passage or an entire paragraph or an entire sentence. So we're gonna have to work on penmanship. And so I'm gonna show you in a, in a bit after I finish with this part right here. In the binder, you have a gold mine because you're gonna have to differentiate your instruction these last few weeks so that all your kids who have indecipherable grammar and penmanship can go from a zero to a one and the kids who have poor grammar 
or penmanship can go hopefully from a one to a two because we have to all improve at things. And so the I indecipherable penmanship in the binder, I'm gonna show you in a moment that from pages 10 through 27, you can work on penmanship in print, all the letters in print and in cursive. So when you sing the alphabet, five letters in print have a little tail, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. I don't care about the rest. That part's not on the star test. And I just want to put a little note in there. If you're telling your kids they have to write in cursive, that's not required. If you're telling your kids they have to write on the computer, that wasn't required by the state. That was a district decision. It's not a state thing until 22, 23, from my understanding. And so I just want to say that if you have your kids write in cursive, they will also have to make sure that their lowercase f's and z's have a little tail and those are halfway underlined. Why? Because if you have lots of capital letters in print or cursive, uh, above, lowercase letters above the line, they look like capitals. And so we got to be careful with that. The grammar um, cups, it starts with capitalization. Sorry, it starts with spelling for kids who are at the word level. Being able to take a picture of a word or take a picture of the individual letters that can come together to make a word and then put a space, okay? So then we, then we go to capitalization because some kids are on the phrase level. So a group of words that form the name of uh, a person, a place, a thing, an idea, a building, all the capitalization rules. The third section of the binder, this goes from 28 all the way to 230. If your grammar is indecipherable, poor or weak, you probably should spend some time in this section because in all of the editing, half of the test in fourth grade, 16 of the points are nothing but cups with two s's the punctuation is for kids who are at the sentence level usage sometimes you're going to check and say what's the problem with sentence 13 if you can't tell from sentence 13 because they have a pronoun there possibly you might have to do the michael jackson moonwalk eat 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 and check sentence 12 to see is it singular or is it plural? Is it past? Is it present? Or is it future on the predicate? Is it simple? Or is it compound subject? Or simple or compound predicate? Those are all things based on usage, but I shouldn't practice usage until I've first practiced what we uh, call scaffolding our grammar, the spelling at the word level capitalization at the phrase level, punctuation at the sentence level, usage at the paragraph level, and then finally sentence boundaries. Uh, when you're learning how to write an entire paragraph, they tend to have too many words without a punctuation. That's what we call in writing a run-on. And then we have too much punctuation without words, that's called a fragment. I call that reader's whiplash. I didn't get to receive your subject and your predicate. So we can get into several grammar. So that I is um, here. Into, there's no idea. Into several penmanship, into several grammar. And the reason I put that I on his mouth, some kids are really good at talking, but we're not taking a talking test. They could tell you all their ideas they've got until they're blue in the face, but until their ideas can graduate out their mouth, down their arm and out their pencil on a piece of paper, it's possible that they're gonna have illegible grammar and they will get two zeros. Let's see, in the content, if I only have a sentence or two, and then there's nothing else in the body or in the conclusion, 
they're going to say, I'm sorry, there's not enough there for me to grade and give you a good grade. So what you might say is, hey, let's use this I as the top part as a tree, a T, a transition to the body and a T. What topic sentence can I give? What reason can I give? And then how can I develop the reason by develop, if you can see that there, there's two little Ds inside the letter B of body. How do I develop each reason? If I'm going to have two, then I have to develop both of them by giving an example of what I mean or, an, or examples. How do I get a three? By explaining E-X-P-L-A-I-N, seven. Who, what, when, where, why, which, how. You can explain a reason by asking your students questions, who, what, when, where, why, which, or how, and all of a sudden, if they answer the question with their mouth, you're going to teach them how to graduate to that to their pencil, so there is sufficient content that there can be specific supporting sentences that go with your topic sentences. The last I that we mentioned was there was insufficient original content remember it has to be your content so what the reason i have this three c's here did you write a conclusion also known as an ending did you work on your conventions known as editing did you fix the content the organization and development known as revising so i would suggest that you make this little stick man here and help your kids let me show you real quick before we take a look uh, at the essays from secondary. In fact, I might wait and show you that at another time because I wanted to keep the videos short, like I mentioned. Let me go to my binder in, on, on, the, on the screen. So as you see, as I mentioned, if your students are functioning at the letter level, then you might want to go to page 10, as you can see it right here, page 10, I'm going to put, put a little circle right here, page 10 begins a section that I call how to write, write, penmanship rules, contract. So if we go, if I, if I show you uh, just a couple of pages, I think this next page is the one that will help a lot in terms of getting your kids to write neatly. Have a penmanship rule contract. There's seven basic rules that your kids should follow. And then they're gonna agree on the test in less than a month to make sure that you're, they're gonna follow the penmanship rules above or for the rest of the month of March and that first week of April, they're gonna have to rewrite their paper. They can sign it, their parents can sign it, and then they'll turn it in so that there's an, an agreement between teachers, parents, and the students. So if you look for the kids who are in fourth grade or in secondary seventh grade functioning at a kinder or first grade level, there are some pages in there where you can practice using the, the double spaced dotted lines until they can get better at the entire alphabet in both lowercase and uppercase. For kids who have struggles keeping letters, if print is Iron Man, no letters should be touching. And in the same way that on your computer, no letters are touching when you type, if you're using regular fonts, then in if i'm writing on lines i wouldn't want any letters touching so you might have your kids who are struggling with their letter formations and everything just smashed together putting use page 19 of the binder to make sure they keep all of their letters in in a certain place and then with their pinky they can pretend like they're pushing the space bar between words and space space after an ending punctuation between sentences. Something I suggest, if you can't fit the whole word, let me point right here. If you can't fit the whole word, then you're going to not write the word because we don't want a lot of hyphens there at the end. We want to make sure 
that we have essays that look neat. I'd rather have you write less quantity and have good looking quality, if that makes sense. So pages, um, pages 19, what was it, what I said? Pages 10 through 27 go over everything to do with penmanship, how to, how to write neatly in print and in cursive. And if you have kids who struggle with grammar, I suggest that you use page 25 as a rough draft, that they write their name or their number, the purpose, expository or persuasive, the prompt, whatever the topic is. And the reason that you would have them number of one through 26 on their rough draft is so that before they go to the final copy on paper or the computer over this next month, you can have the kids work in groups or with partners on cups and say, oh, we have too much weak or indecipherable grammar where you can tell the, the kids to look for mistakes in cups Capitalization uses punctuation, spelling, run-ons, and fragments, and they can even say the line number. Uh, they don't have to tell them the exact mistake. You have a capitalization mistake on line seven that they can have a separate sheet of paper where they don't touch the student's paper, but they will help him. So let me kind of scroll through here now. Um, the, the spelling section starts by going over a list of homophones, as you can see. And that goes all the way down to the 80s. And there's a list of homophones, little homophone activity. Then it gets into single sentence spelling where there's lots of spelling mistakes. These were written by students on the actual star test. And so it was, I used them to think if these were the kind of mistakes that kids made in April, then maybe our other kids are making these mistakes in, uh, just um, August until March. So then as you see, it starts the phrase level, capitalization practice, each rule, and then single sentence practice, because that's what the test, they're gonna only ask the kids about what change should be made in sentence blank. Well, it's only one sentence. Then it gets into the sentence level. And I drew some big punctuation marks for you, yellow for slowing the sentence down and red for stopping it. There are some really cool punctuation related activities that you can do. Uh, then after that, it gets into usage using a stickman subject verb agreement, uh, how to organize sentences, uh, has punctuation, different kinds of punctuation, as you can see, even run-ons and fragments here. And then it gets into usage, the paragraph level. And so what I've done for those of you who have um, little money and you can't print the binder in color, well, all of the words in red in the usage section are italicized or slanted. So the student will be able to know, even though I can't see that this is red in my teacher's binder, I can, I can see that it's italicized so I can practice usage. Uh, and so they won't have to rewrite the entire sentence. Just tell them, fix the word that's red and make it green by putting the correct subject verb agreement. And so as you can see here, this is great practice for all of your kids who are struggling at the letter, word, phrase, sentence, and paragraph level. So I hope that you enjoyed that video. I would love to see your students and you come up with that little uh, I, I, I cartoon uh, stick man. I uh, just want to take a moment to thank the wonderful teachers from Idea San Benito, uh, Jennifer and my friend Angelina. They gave me this awesome mug, a cool gift card from my friend's restaurant Chili's. Uh, and even this really fancy headset, where you're able to hear me now more in stereo and in better quality. Thank you, Aidea San Benito, Jennifer and Angelina. God bless you guys. Let's say bye to zeros. Reminder, I 
no idea about the topic. I, there's indecipherable penmanship. Let's work on our letters. I can talk, but I can't write. My cups, my grammar is so bad. I, there's insufficient content. There's not enough quantity to be able to grade and insufficient original content. All we did was copy the read, the think, or other sections uh, of the test in the editing, revising passages. So there you have it. God bless you guys. Please share the mariachi method of remembering how not to get zeros with your teacher friends. Um, students, if you're watching this video, I hope that you guys draw the little cartoon figure like I did and that you work on some of those skills that we mentioned so that you will not get any zeros on April the 6th. God bless you guys and have a great day.